Welcome to Electron Online. Here's our first example of how to deal with a three-fourths body. Assuming that this is in equilibrium at this very moment, as this person is pulling on it with a certain tension, the amount of tension is not known, that's one of the things we need to find out. We have a piece of wood, let's say that the length of the wood is 4 meters, the mass is 10 kilograms, so that the weight of the wood is equal to mg, which is 10 kilograms times acceleration of the gravity, which is 98 newtons. We also know there's a, an action at A, there's a force, because the weight of the piece of wood and the tension uh, caused by the person pulling on that rope will cause the beam to be pushed into this corner, and the corner will then be pushing back. There'll be a reaction force, and we need to find the direction and the magnitude of that reaction force. So first, let's try to find the direction of that force. Since it's a three-body force, or a three-force body, I should say, we know uh, we can find the direction of the third force by drawing the line of action of the first two forces for which we know the direction. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's continue this line of action straight up. And where, where the two meet, where the, t the tension meets the line of action of the weight, we know that the third force, the action at A, the direction of that force must pass through that point. So the line of action of the third force must pass through that point. So I then draw a line coming this way. Then I know that the force here must be acting in this direction. So that's force three. Now, of course, I need to find the angle of that force. And the way that I can do that is to use some trigonometry here. First of all, what I can see here is that the angle that the tension makes with the horizontal, that must be 20 degrees. This angle is 25 degrees. This is 45 degrees. So I can make a triangle with these three forces. So my first force will be in this direction. That's the weight of the beam. The length of that represents the weight, the magnitude of the weight, which is 98 newtons. The second force, which is the tension, will be acting in this direction, making an angle of 20 degrees with the horizontal, which means it makes an angle of 110 degrees with the vertical. So that would be the tension right here. And then, of course, to have all this in equilibrium, I can take my third force, which will be in this direction, and complete the triangle. So this will have to go up in this direction. So. Oop, not quite a straight line. Let me try that again. Uh, a little bit better. So there's F3, there's the tension, and there's the weight. Of course, the tension is also a vector quantity. All right. So what I need to do now, of course, is I need to find out what this angle is right here. So what's this angle? Let's call this angle theta. How do we find that angle theta? Well, that's this angle right here with the vertical. We're trying to find this angle right here called theta. How do we do that? Well, in order to do that, we need to know a little bit more about what's going on in here. So, what I can say here is that I need to know, well, what I'm saying here is I need to know the actual dimensions of this particular triangle to come up with this angle. So, if I can figure out this length right here, and I already know what this length right here is because I know that this from there to there is two meters, so that's the hypotenuse here, and this is two meters, there's another hypotenuse. I can figure out this distance right here. So let's call this distance one, and distance one can be found by taking the hypotenuse times the cosine of 45 degrees. So distance one equals two meters, which is the hypotenuse, times the cosine of 45 degrees, which is 0 0.707, times two meters. This would be 1.414 meters. So that's the distance one right here. Now, I can figure out this distance because I know that it's this distance minus this distance right here. I'm going to figure out this distance. Let's call that distance 2. How do I find distance 2? Well, I know that distance 1 is the same as this distance 1 right here. So this has to be 1.414 meters. So this is 1.414 meters. I know that this angle here is 20 degrees. So this is the opposite side, that's the adjacent side, so I can use the tangent for that. I can say that the tangent of 20 degrees is equal to the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. In this case, the opposite side, that would be D2, and the adjacent side is D1, which is 
four meters. So D2 is equal to 1.414 meters times the tangent of 20 degrees. For that, I'm going to need a calculator. So take the tangent of 20 and multiply that times 1.414 and I get 0 0.1, 0 0.515 meters. So this is equal to 0 0.515 meters to three decimal places. So that would be distance two. So then this distance right here, that would be distance three, is equal to this distance, which is 1.414 meters, plus another 1.414 meters minus distance two, plus 1.414 meters minus distance two. That'll give me distance three. All right. So I know that distance two is equal to 0 0.515 meters. So I know that distance three is therefore equal to uh, 1.414 times 2 minus 0.515 equals, so that would be 2.313 meters. So now I have distance 3. Now I have this triangle right here. All right. I know distance 1. I know distance 3. I can figure out this angle right here. And from that, I can find angle theta. Okay, so let's call this angle right in here, let's call that angle phi. And angle phi is going to be equal to the arc tangent of the opposite side over the adjacent side. So as the arc tangent of the opposite side would be D3 and the adjacent side would be D1, which is equal to the arc tangent of D3, which we said was, where did D3 go? There we go, 2.313 divided by D1, which is 1.414. All right, so divide that by 1.414 and take the inverse tangent, I get 58.56 degrees. 58.56 degrees, which means that theta, the angle I'm looking for, that's this angle right here, theta, I found this angle, I want this angle right here, so therefore theta is equal to 90 degrees minus phi, which is equal to 90 degrees, minus 58.56 degrees, and so the minus plus 90 equals, that gives me 31.44 degrees. All right, that's this angle right here, so that would be equal to 31.44 degrees, which means I can find this angle right here, because now, to find this third angle, I take 180 degrees minus 110 degrees minus 31.44 degrees, so 180 degrees minus 110 degrees, which is 70, minus 31.44 degrees is equal to, so that would be 70 minus 30, oop, again, 31.44 equals, 38.56 degrees, 38.56 degrees. That's this angle right here. So let me go here, this is 20 degrees. And this one is 38.56 degrees. Now I have a triangle where I know the three angles and I know the length of one of the sides. This is equal to 98 Newtons. I don't know the magnitude of F3. I don't know the magnitude of the tension, but I do have a triangle and I do have the three angles. Now I can use the law of sines to go ahead and find the magnitude of the tension and the magnitude of F3. Because I can say that the sine of 110 degrees, so the sine, or let me turn it around. I can say that the magnitude of F3 divided by the sine of the angle directly opposite that, which is the sine of 110 degrees, is equal to omega, which is 98 degrees, 98 newtons, divided by the sine of the angle directly across, which is the sine of 38.56 degrees, which is equal to the tension, which I don't know yet the magnitude of, times the sine of the angle directly above that, which is 31.44 degrees. So using the law of sine, I'm now able to find both F3 and the tension. So F3, is equal to 98 newtons times the sine of 110 degrees divided by the sine of 
1.56 degrees. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have 110, take the sine, divide that by 38.56, take the sine of that, and multiply that times 98, and I get 148 newtons. 148 newtons for the magnitude of F3. And now for the magnitude of the tension, I take 98 newtons times the sine of 31.44 degrees divided by the sine of 38.56 degrees. All right, so we have 31.44, take the sine of that, and divide that by 38.56 take the sine of that, and multiply it times 98, and I get 82 newtons for the tension. All right, and that's how you use the principles of a three-force body to solve for the two unknowns, the tension here, and the force acting on A. Now, without using this system, this would be a very, very difficult problem, but knowing the two things, knowing that the lines of action all have to pass to the same point, which helps us find the direction of F3. Of course, it takes a little bit of work with using the angles and the triangles. And then also knowing that by having a three-force body, we know that the triangle made by the three forces must be complete. And if we know the magnitude of one, and we can find the angles of the triangle, we can then find the magnitude of the other two forces. And that's the technique that we use to solve a three-force body problem like this. Oh, yes, thank you. And I did miss something here. Of course, I need to take the sign of that angle, not just the angle. All right, that's how it's done.